Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Chase Hayden, and I'm from the Hayden Institute. You can find out more about our office at www.haydeninstitute.com. There you can find articles that we post, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all kinds of stuff uh, in regards to health and wellness, and what you can do to, to take control of your life. Today we're going to be talking about the word inflammation, how it affects our body, what we can do about it, and how we can prevent it or how we can overcome what inflammation we have. Inflammation is a word that most, most athletes dread, most mothers fear, and most doctors love to suppress. But it doesn't always have to be that way. Because inflammation is a natural process in our body that helps us in the long run. But if it stays for too long, it starts to hurt our bodies. So most of the time when we think of inflammation, we think of swelling, redness, uh, temperature change, pain, usually associated with like a joint, such as twisting your ankle, or or dislocating your shoulder. Sometimes it can be associated with the sinuses or the gut uh, and the intestines, you know. A lot of times we look at inflammation as a bad thing. But in reality there are two types of inflammation and they're both not bad for us. One helps us a lot and one does lead to the negative re uh, health effects that we don't want to have. So if we look at the two types of inflammation we basically have acute inflammation and then chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation is the kind we like. This is the kind that protects us, and it protects us in three major ways. So for example, if we twist our ankle, it's going to get red, it's going to get swollen, the temperature may change, it's going to have limited range of motion, it may even give you pain if you keep trying to walk on it, because it's starting to have acute inflammation develop in the area. Now, as the acute inflammation is setting in, there's an increase in blood flow, which is good, because it's bringing more cellular nutrition to the area through the bloodstream, more oxygen, more uh, minerals, more things that your body needs to repair the area so your body prioritizes and focuses on sending more stuff in that direction that's good second it helps stop the prevent uh, it helps prevent the the dead cellular tissue from going on to elsewhere and infecting other parts of the body so therefore if you tore some cells if you tore a ligament if you twisted the area bad enough to create cellular damage you don't want that stuff free floating around in the system so the inflammation helps come and wall off the area and third, it helps to take off that walled off area and then funnels out the dead stuff and moves it out into the lymphatic system in order to get rid of it. So from a twisted ankle standpoint, that's a good reaction. We want the inflammation, we want the swelling because we want the increased blood flow, we want the nutrition to come in and start protecting the area and healing it up. If we got a, a, a splinter, say we're out, on the, out playing around in the woods with the kids and we get a splinter or a thorn stick inside of us, and we get a similar response. Something from the outside was introduced into our body, your body recognizes it and begins to swell, it begins to get warm and inflamed, more blood comes to the area to protect it, to kill off whatever might be in there from an infection standpoint to help heal up the tissue that's broken off and, and torn up inside in that area. And then you also have the immune system that comes in and helps wall off the area so that the infection doesn't spread from the finger and go into the heart or into the kidneys or in other parts of the body. And therefore we can start funneling all that garbage out into the lymphatic system and getting rid of it. So inflammation in an acute setting is very efficient for our bodies and helps us a lot in the healing process. And sometimes inflammation takes as little as three days to, to take care and run its course. Sometimes it takes as much as six to eight weeks to go through and run its course. But as long as it's able to come in protect the area, heal it, and then finish its job, that's when we like it. When inflammation comes in, sets up in the area, and never leaves, or spreads to other areas, and it turns into chronic inflammation, that's where we start to have trouble, and that's when we start to get other symptoms such as heart disease, cancer, weight gain, chronic fatigue, autoimmune disorders, and things of that nature. So, if we can identify what type of inflammation is going on in the area, if we can support it so they can finish its job, instead of suppressing it and stopping it in its tracks, allowing it to spread, then we will be able to overcome symptomatically a lot of the symptoms that are present just from inflammation. So in our office we don't treat specific conditions. So if someone comes in with diabetes, I do not treat them for their diabetes. I look at them from a nutritional and neurologic standpoint and I help them to identify where the areas of inflammation are in their body. We help support those areas of inflammation through nutritional means, through diet modification, through quantum neurology rehabilitation, through chiropractic, through acupuncture techniques, through a wide variety of alternative techniques to help the body overcome the inflammatory process and then start fixing itself. 
because I believe that the body can fix itself when the inflammation is removed. In fact, a couple of doctors in the chiropractic world have once said that the body needs no help, it just needs no interference. So therefore, if we can take out those interferences, such as the inflammation, then the body will take care of itself. And sometimes these inflammatory processes get stuck because there's nutrient deficiencies or because we keep using, keep using the body part whenever it's injured and inflamed and it never has time to overcome the healing process. So like I said, there's acute inflammation and then there's chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation can be good for us because it protects us and when it stays and lingers and converts into chronic inflammation, that's when we start to have the trouble and that's when the symptoms linger for years and years and that's why eventually people show up and they say, look, it's been 10 years, I have chronic fatigue, I have fibromyalgia, I've got Epstein-Barr, I've got diabetes, and I've got all these health issues, and I don't know what happened to me. I've always tried to eat healthy, I exercise all the time, and yet the weight kept coming, the hormones stayed unbalanced, and here I am today with a whole bunch of symptoms and a whole bunch of diagnoses, when really their body's just really inflamed. And if we can stop that inflammation, if we can help it to overcome its natural process and, and go away on its own, then the body starts fixing itself and a lot of these patients report changes in their symptoms. So, how do we test for inflammation? Inflammation can be tested very easily through blood tests such as your C-reactive protein. It's a common test. You can have just a general systemic C-reactive protein or you can do a cardiac specific which, which measures the area most prone to heart disease or stroke. And C-reactive protein just gives an idea of inflammation in the body. You can also check the ESR which is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Um, it's just another inflammatory marker in the body. When you're looking to see if an infection is causing the inflammation, something like a complete blood count will do it, where you check the white blood cells in relationship to how the rest of the body is handling it. You can check your basal temperature or your body temperature in the morning and in the evening. It's probably going to be a little bit lower than in the middle of the afternoon. But by just monitoring your temperature, you can check for, for fluctuations and possible signs of inflammation. That's common whenever someone has a fever they're inflamed, therefore their temperature goes up because their body is having an immune response and its inflammation is occurring to protect the area to help kill off the infection and then get rid of the cells that no longer need to be there. So what causes inflammation? We know that inflammation is good for us in some cases, not good for us in others. We know a few ways we can screen for it, but what actually is causing the inflammation? Well, in some cases it's just a little minor trauma or a little injury. If you're in a car wreck, that's a traumatic incident to the body, inflammation is probably going to set in because it's a stress. You had muscle damage, you probably had ligament damage, it's very common to see inflammation in that area. If you're playing basketball and you twist your knee, there's going to be inflammation in the area because there's a trauma induced to that area. But there are other non-traumatic ways that you can have inflammation. Like we mentioned before, infections will induce an inflammatory response. So exposure to viruses, molds, funguses, yeast, parasites, etc. can show up as inflammation in the body. You can also have inflammation from food sensitivities. If your body doesn't handle a particular food very well, such as people with lactose intolerance, or gluten sensitivities, or corn sensitivities, or those that are allergic to peanuts, that's an inflammatory response that your body has every time you introduce that food into your body. You can also have reactions to medications, or poor quality supplements. I just had a patient come in this last week that was having uh, dry, itchy rashes and skin irritation that she was always itching all over her chest. And when we changed one of the supplements that she bought from just a local store where she lives to something without the binders and excipients and the, the extra filler stuff inside of it, her rashes went away and her itching stopped within about 24 hours. And she hasn't had it since. So her body was having a chemical exposure reaction and creating inflammation and creating a symptom just by putting something in her body that she didn't tolerate very well. So medications, poor quality supplements, food sensitivities, trauma, hormone replacement, the, all of these things can induce an inflammatory response and if the body gets stuck like a broken record on that inflammatory response it transitions from acute to chronic and then sets your body up for uh, other symptoms and potentially diseases and other conditions that get diagnosed later on down the road. So we know what we can do to test for it. We know what some of the potential causes are. What do we do as a society to, to decrease the inflammation in our lives? Well, it's very simple if it's a traumatic injury. In fact, there's an acronym called RICE. So in the training world or in the sports world, anytime you have an injury, you want to RICE it. 
You want to rest it, ice it, compress it, and elevate it. This is very easy to think about if you twist your ankle. Most of us know that if we twist our ankle, we can put some ice on it, the inflammation is going to be decreased and accelerated as the injury begins to heal. If we compress it, we start allowing the lymphatic drainage to occur more readily. So your lymphatic system is your clearing out system associated with your bloodstream, but it doesn't have a pump associated with it. So your blood gets pumped through your body, through the heart. Every time it beats, it pumps blood. Your lymphatic system, which is the trash removal system of your body, only moves whenever muscles are activated. So sometimes in diabetics, for example, whenever they wear the stockings to help increase their muscle contractions, to help pump out the lymphatic system. That's why you would compress whenever somebody has an injury with the ankle because you want to make sure that lymphatic system doesn't get stuck and stagnant there from the injury and it's able to start flowing again every time they move it. So when we rest it, when we ice it, when we compress it, and when we elevate it, we change the way that the inflammation is presented. And it helps it to overcome the inflammatory process sooner so that it doesn't convert it to a chronic injury that lingers for years and years and years. Now that's easy to see with someone that has an ankle injury, but what happens if someone has a food sensitivity? Can you rest, ice, compress, or elevate their colon or their stomach? See, that's a lot harder. You can rest it, but you can't really ice it, compress it, or elevate it. So the best thing to do if someone has inflammation in the colon or in their organ systems is to start removing certain foods that contribute to the inflammatory process, such as gluten, casein, corn, soy, peanuts, things of that nature. So inflammatory foods, and just do a quick Google search on inflammatory foods, you'll see a big old long list of them. Those induce inflammation in most people. So therefore, if you already have chronic inflammation, if you're experiencing symptoms such as fatigue, weight gain, hormone imbalance, cancer, diabetes, a whole list or slew of conditions, then therefore inflammation is present and we want to decrease that inflammation. So we can start by cleaning up the inside of the body by just eliminating certain foods. We can also take other things to help us to overcome the inflammatory process and help us to complete the cycle. So essential fatty acids, for example, we hear a lot about those such as omega-3s, omega-6s, omega-9s, fish oils, flaxseed oil. These oils help our body to overcome inflammation. Our bodies or our cells have a thing called a phospholipid bilayer which basically means there's phosphorus and lipids or fats that protect the lining or the cells of every single one of us in the world. So when that cellular lining is damaged or not functioning properly, we want to start increasing the cellular ability to maintain itself and to maintain integrity. Cod liver oil, flaxseed oil, fish oils of good quality provide the omega-3s that are necessary to allow that function to occur. That's why when you hear about on the news or on Dr. Oz or on all these popular media is where they tell you to take a fish oil because it supports memory and it supports brain function and it supports nerve function and it supports cardiovascular activity and it lowers your blood pressure. And it does all these things because it helps maintain and strengthen up the cellular integrity and complete the inflammatory process. So cod liver oil is an amazing product that all of us should be on. Secondly, we want to increase our dark green leafy vegetables. We want to eat more salads, more vegetables, have more non-inflammatory foods added into our diet. For those of you that don't like inflammatory foods, supplement it. Do, you know, there are great quality supplements out there that have whole foods as their basis. They aren't using excipients, they're not using binders, they're not using fillers or chemical additives to mimic vitamins and minerals, but they're using spinach and broccoli and kale and carrots and all these other vegetables and they're grinding them up into powders and putting them in a tablet form so that you can get plenty of good green vegetable nutrition into your body to help support the inflammatory processes that are occurring. And so as you support these through a supplement and through dietary changes, you'll start seeing an improvement in your health. So omega-3 oils are great things to add into your body. Dark green leafy vegetables are great to add into your body. Digestive enzymes when you eat are another great way to help facilitate the inflammatory process to complete its job. If your body is inflamed and struggling, the best way to rest it is to eat non-inflammatory diet. Well, your body still has to break down those good, healthy things that you're eating, though. So therefore, if you can provide assistance in the, in the breakdown process through digestive enzymes or things like hydrochloric acid, which helps break down your proteins, and these different digestive aids, your body will be able to rest more efficiently as you're using an external source to help overcome what's going on. 
And then as the body cleans itself up and as the inflammation has completed its process and goes away, you may not need to use those digestive enzymes anymore. So those are simple supplements or simple dietary changes you can make. In our office, we do some things to facilitate the inflammation process as well. So we use light therapy. So this is a GRT light, and it uses red and infrared lights that flash to help your nervous system to reduce inflammation. So red light and infrared light have both been shown to decrease inflammation in the body, to help the body communicate more efficiently by creating more adenosine triphosphate, which is like the fuel or the gasoline that your body uses to communicate. So therefore, as more cellular energy is created, the body can overcome and finish the processes that it started. So therefore, if there's inflammation, it helps decrease inflammation as it communicates more efficiently. If the brain can't communicate with your ankle because it's twisted and injured, and those signals are being jumbled up as they're going back up to the brain and the brain can't talk to that area and you have pain and you have weakness and you have other dysfunctions there, light therapy in conjunction with quantum neurology rehabilitation helps to restore that communication so that the body can finish up the process that it started of repairing, healing, and cleaning up the trash. Apart from using light therapy in our office, we also do lymphatic techniques. And massage therapists are phenomenal at this. They, they can do lymphatic drainage techniques. It's like we talked about before when a diabetic uses those stockings to help flush out the legs so they don't develop diabetic ulcers or, or swelling down in the area or pitting edema, you can start using other techniques like massage therapists or chiropractors or this instrument here we use in our office that's called the VibroCuster that pushes back and forth. It's a great tool to be able to do lymphatic drainage techniques and start getting the trash moving from the body so that it's not inflamed anymore. So when there's acute inflammation it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing, it just needs to overcome its process. We don't want to stop it. We don't want to just halt the inflammation in its tracks to make us feel good for a moment. We want to let the body complete its task so that it doesn't linger and convert into a longer or bigger problem later on down the road through chronic inflammation. So in our office we encourage our patients to support their bodies through omega-3 fatty acid supplementation, through diet modification, through removing food inflammatory foods and food intolerances. We encourage light stimulation through low-level light therapy, vibration or, uh, or lymphatic drainage techniques, and a wide variety of other things to help the body to overcome inflammation. Because the difference between someone that has symptoms and someone that does not is the amount of inflammation in their body. So as we screen for it through blood tests and through history taking and figure out what's going on with the area, if we can support it and help your body to overcome what's going on, then you will see a change in your life. Whether it's something as simple as a twisted ankle or a frozen shoulder or something a little bit more complex such as diabetes, heart disease, or cancer. If we can help your body by supporting the inflammatory process both nutritionally and neurologically we should see a change in your symptoms. And not that we're treating the specific disease because we're not. We're helping you through the neurologic and nutritional applications that your body's already trying to fulfill on its own. We're just giving a little nudge and helping it to support those processes on its own. So I'm Dr. Chase Hayden. If you have any questions for me or about what we talked about today, feel free to check out our website. It's www.haydeninstitute.com. So that's www.haydeninstitute.com. We look forward to finding out more about what you have to say on Facebook, on Twitter, on the comments on this page, and anywhere else you find me. Have a great day.